What's up guys and welcome to this video. Uh, this is the fourth video. In the last video we did um, objects being thrown up and not returning to their original position. Now we are moving on to the fourth uh, subcategory, uh, which we can say is dropping an object from a moving platform. Okay, so what kind of questions are these? Okay, so these are the kinds of questions you'll get where you're um, traveling on an elevator and uh, or, or like, oh, let me actually think of a question. Okay, so let's say you're traveling in a hot air balloon and you look over the edge and you drop your phone or something like that. Those are the kinds of questions you can expect. Um, basically, you're moving with a platform of some sort and something falls uh, off of the platform okay so some things to note with these kinds of questions everything stays pretty much the same except you need to know that um, the object uh, that's been thrown that's been thrown off has the same initial velocity uh, as the platform okay and so when we say the word dropped in these kinds of situation dropped does not mean zero or initial velocity of zero meters per second Okay, so that's quite important to remember. So usually when we say something is dropped, um, the, we assume that the initial velocity is zero. But in these questions, when we say something is dropped, the initial velocity is not zero. The initial velocity um, of the projectile or the object is the velocity at which uh, the platform was moving. Okay, so with that being said, let's go straight into an example. A uh, very similar procedure to all the other questions. Uh, but yeah, so this I believe is example four. Okay, and we can say something like James um, is traveling in a hot air balloon, balloon with a vertical velocity. of uh, let's say 10 meters per second he leans over the edge and drops his phone by mistake okay okay and we can say at this point he is 7.5 7 meters above the ground. Okay, so uh, not too much information there. The most important information is probably the initial velocity and his height above the ground. Everything else is just um, fluff. Okay, so let's get into the first question. So let's say A is what is the velocity at which he drops his phone or uh, at what is the velocity of the phone at the moment uh, it is dropped okay so this would be technically a theory question because all we need to say is that the velocity would be his velocity is vertical velocity so the initial velocity would be equal to 10 meters per second and he is moving vertically upwards so we can say upwards uh, let's just put the word upwards here somewhere okay 
So he is initially moving upwards with the balloon. Okay, cool stuff. Now question B uh, says, what is the maximum height reached by the phone? By the firm. Okay, cool stuff. For this, let's draw a quick diagram. Okay, so what's happening is we have a hot air balloon. Okay, and Jane, James leans over the edge and he drops his phone. So when he drops his phone, it's initially moving upwards. Okay, so I hope this makes sense to you guys. This idea that the phone is moving at the same speed as the hot air balloon as it gets released. So once it gets released, it moves upwards a little bit and then only begins to fall until it hits the ground eventually. Okay, so we want to know the maximum height that it reached. Okay, so I'm going to say that is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write some UVAT. So let's go for it. U V A T S. Our initial velocity, and I'm going to take the upwards direction as being positive. Our initial velocity is 10 meters per second. Our final velocity, I'm doing these UVs between 0.1 to 0.2. Okay, and because that's because the velocity here is equal to zero, the final velocity is zero at its maximum height. The acceleration is a minus 9,8 meters per second squared, the time is unknown, and the displacement is unknown, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the displacement, okay? So what equation can we use? Well, with the information we have, we can use the equation v squared equals u squared plus 2as, okay? So let's just fill in the values. So v squared is 0 squared is equal to u squared, which is 10 squared, Mm, plus 2 times minus 9,8 times s. Okay, so I just need to solve for s, which is 10 squared over 2 times 9,8. And I get a displacement of, let's see what value I get, 10 squared over 2 times 9,8, 0, let's just say 0, 5,10 meters. Okay, so that's how high it travels from 1 to 2. So what is the maximum height reached by the fern? I would say, let's say above the ground. Okay, so above the ground would be, um, above the ground would have to be the total, displacement total is going to be our displacement that we calculated plus his height above the ground from before, which was 7,5. Okay, so if we just add 7.5, we get the total distance is 12, comma six meters above the ground. Okay, so that's the final answer. So I hope that makes sense. I hope you guys understand why we're choosing 10 as our initial velocity. Okay, so let's go on to question C. Um, so let's say how long does it take to reach the maximum height okay so again I'm going to use these same uvats between 1 and 2 um, and I just need to change my equation because I need to solve for t so I can use the equation v equals u plus a t v is 0 is equal to 10 plus minus 9,8 times t so if I solve for t, that's just going to be 10 over 9,8. So t from 1 to 2, or the time taken to reach the maximum height, is 1.02 seconds. Okay. Um, yeah, and then let's say uh, question D is uh, how long... long does it take for the phone to hit the floor? Okay, so in the previous question, I went ahead and calculated the time. In question three, I went ahead and calculated the time all the way from one 
two, three, right? So this time I'm going to use this method that I said you guys should go and try out. Um, so I've already calculated the time from one to two, so I'm going to focus on calculating the time from two to three. Okay, so if I do that, I'm going to need new UVATs. So I'm going from two to three, so I need new UVATs. And I'm going to take downwards as positive. Okay, and the reason is because I know from point two all the way to point three, the phone is moving downwards. Okay, so my initial is zero, my final is unknown, my acceleration is 9,8, my time is a question mark, and my displacement is equal to the distance it travels from the top all the way to the bottom. So it's going to be this 12.6, my total displacement, okay? So remember, I'm going from two to three, so it's all the way from 0 0.2 to 0 0.3, which is 12.6 meters. So my displacement is a positive 12.6 because I am going downwards, okay? So now what I need to do um, how can I do this? So I've got S, U, and A, and I'm looking for T. So let's go searching for an equation. Let's see. S, U, S, U, and uh, A. So this is the equation I'm going to have to use. S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Alternatively, I can use this equation, uh, or... Uh, I'd have to calculate V. Alternatively, I could calculate V. So I'd do two steps. I could calculate V and then calculate T using this equation, using equation two. Um, but I think I'm just going to use the uh, equation number one because that's a one-step equation. So let's go. So S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Okay, nice, u goes to zero, so s is 12,6 is equal to half times 9,8 t squared. So we can calculate t squared is going to be 12,6 over 0 0.5 times 9,8. Okay, that comes out as 2,57 seconds. And if I just want t, and this is t from 2 to 3, is equal to the square root of that answer, which comes out as 1,60 seconds. Okay, so I want the total time taken. So time total is going to be equal to 1.6. That's going from, let's just say this is equal to T12 plus T23, which is equal to 1,02 plus 1,60, which gives me a total of 2,62 seconds. Okay, so maybe for fun, you guys can go and try out the other method. So like I said, the other method, you solve for V first. So let's say method number two. Solve for V first. And then solve for time T. Okay. Um, yep, okay, and let's go on to the last question. Let's see, that's question E. Um, question E just says, draw the velocity time graph for the phone. Okay, so what's the velocity time graph going to look like? So we need set of axes, we have velocity in meters per second, and we have time in seconds. Let's take upwards as being positive. Okay, so our phone initially started off with a velocity of 10 meters per second. Okay, so it initially started off with a velocity of 10 meters per second. After 1,02 seconds, it reaches zero, and after another 1.6, so that's 2,62 seconds, it reaches some negative velocity that we don't know of. Okay, uh, we didn't calculate that, but if we went through method two, we actually would have calculated that. Um, let's see, should we calculate that? Let's just calculate that anyway. So 
let's do it on the side here let's just calculate the velocity so we would use the equation let's see v squared equals u squared plus 2as okay so v squared equals 0 squared plus 2 times 9,8 times our displacement of 12.6 yep okay so v squared v squared comes out as let's see uh, 246,96 so the final velocity comes out as the square root of that answer which is 15,71 meters per second down okay down we know the phone is moving down so this point here is minus 15,71 okay and we know that the gradient of this graph is equal to our acceleration which is equal to minus 9,8 choosing upwards as positive so we have a straight line graph through all three points okay this isn't the best drawn graph but I hope you guys get the idea okay. uh, yeah so I hope that makes a bit of sense 1,02 okay so we have these points lining up we have zero seconds and 10 meters per second, and we have zero uh, velocity of zero at 1,02 seconds. Okay, and that is this video done, guys. So um, there's another section uh, called Accelerating Platforms. It's basically the same thing as this. I'm sure you guys are pretty bored of me doing these kinds of questions. They're all pretty much the same thing. So. I'm not going to go into accelerating platforms. Um, if you guys do want me to do a video on that, then just uh, send me an email or leave a comment or something like that. Or who knows, maybe in the future I might actually do a video. But yeah, for now, this is the end of this series on one directional motion. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys found this uh, series interesting and helpful. Yeah, thanks, guys.